but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops and escape this drive. They go play action with Hurts. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now that's a heck of a moment for your first sack of the game because if this long drive ends without a touchdown because of that sack, we're going to look back and say that might be one of the biggest plays of this contest. So after that sack, Hurts and the Eagles, tough spot here, third and long. They'll look to throw. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle, but they allow the conversion. On first and 10, it's Hurts. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Asante Samuel Jr. The 30, 10, and he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a Charger TD. So just a tremendous play there defensively on this opening drive, not just to make the interception, but to take it all the way home. And it felt like this was a defense that was on its heels a bit to start this thing off. Yeah, they pretty much let the other guys march right down the field until that moment. Yeah, key play there. Turned it all around. Big moment. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. The last time, everything looked pretty good except that final play on the pick six. And now they've got to come right back out here, Charles, and try to pick up the pieces and get things going again. Yeah, it certainly seems dire, doesn't it? But there is a silver lining, and it is hard to see so soon after that touchdown. But the game plan was definitely working. They were generating offense, had the ball beyond midfield, getting wins on each down against the defense. So they're moving it well. They just have to hang on to it. Yeah, as you said, though, probably tough to remember those good things on that last drive when it ended like it did. Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. And that's good for a gain of six. And that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. He was out there waving his arms. And when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is because you've got to get his attention because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, and he found the right spot for the completion. Got him in. It's Brown. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Here we go. Hey. They'll run with Sanders up the middle. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. On second down and four. Hurts. This will be caught by Brown. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Up the middle they go with Sanders. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. 
Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. To throw on second and six, Hurts. This is Smith with a grab. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers' 12-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. Let's go now. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Here's Hurts to throw. The quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. But there's an incompletion, partner, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to throw here. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. And he is going to lose yardage here. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. On play action, they'll throw. Looking for Watkins, and it's intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And they finally put it into this return, but not before he's all the way down to the 37. Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, partner, because this is still a one-possession game, and that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning to points for the other side. Herbert will give this one to Eckler, and he'll be taken down after a pickup of about seven as the clock will stop here for the two-minute warning. Eckler going to get it again on second down. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? It's Eckler again. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Eckler now between the tackles. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And if that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. They'll run here with Spiller. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. And that gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Again, Spiller. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Well, they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Up the middle with Eckler, and he is going to lose yardage here. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef, 
that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Well, it's not the touchdown that they wanted, CD, but still, they got to be pretty happy here. You steal the ball away from them on their opening possession, and you turn that into the early 3-0 lead. Yeah, you painted the picture perfectly there, all the things that have gone on. And the important thing, other than the lead, of course, is as you described, both sides of the ball now have some momentum. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going deep for Brown. It's tipped, but it doesn't matter. He still catches it. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes of a half, headed into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. Both these teams making their final halftime adjustments. We're just about ready to get back to football. So for the call of the second half, we get back up to Philadelphia and Brandon God. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. So the Chargers will start the second half with the lead and the football as we're underway in the third quarter. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. The Charger drive about to get going. on first down now and this will be well too low for him to bring in it's incomplete we've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring flying around making plays on the ball and we see yet another errant throw as a result an incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25 they'll run out of the gun with Eckler and nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line he'll get back only to the line of scrimmage no gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Right where this set of downs started, they need a full ten here to pick up the first down and move the chains. On third down, here's Eckler. And he's not going to get anywhere close to the marker as he'll stop him well short of the yellow line. It's a gain of just three, and the offense likely going to yield to the punting unit here on fourth down. Here's J.K. Scott now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Fielded just inside the 20. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. offense set to begin their next drive. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Hurts a handoff to Sanders, and he'll get a couple up to the 29. But we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. 
But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. So pass interference, the call, and that does not look to be going over too well on the defensive side. Or on their sideline, because I believe their head coach is saying right now, hey, you've got to call that both ways. As Sanders with a carry on first down as he picks his way forward for a gain of five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive hey! line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. From the 41, Hurts. And Hurts is intercepted, his third of the game. Picked off by Nasir Adderley. And that was one I kind of saw coming, Charge. He had a free safety just hanging back there over the middle, waiting, and he saw that ball go in the air, and he jumped on it. And I don't know why the quarterback didn't see that. That was just your standard cover three, which means a free safety in the middle of the field, the two corners, and they divide the field in thirds. But when you have a free safety with range, like a good center fielder, he can go from side to side and make plays on the football as he did there. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. Finds the open man. It's Mike Williams. And a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. They'll run for it with Eckler. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he shorted the line to gain. The fourth down play doesn't work for the Chargers. And the Eagles defense able to hold. Okay, break. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. Their go defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And they run the option here on first and ten. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Six yards there on the keeper. It's second down. Well, that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick, more than a space eater. He just made a great play there. Here we go. So they'll try to move the ball closer here on third down. A field goal from this spot would be just inside of 60 yards, 59 to be exact. From the gun, it's Hurts. A bullet 
throw, but incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. They're going on fourth down with Hurts. And he's got his man. It's the tight end, Goddard. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. They go back to the ground with Sanders. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Hurts. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. And not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been caught on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Charger drive about to get going. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. They started on the ground with Eckler. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. The tackle by Nicobe Dean. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But the bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this tie. Let's go now. Here's Herbert now on second down, eluding the pressure right. Pass incomplete. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes, this is exactly both. what you do. It's both because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. If you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. Herbert. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Avante Maddox. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. 
And we say it often, Charles, but not all interceptions are created equally, and that is a big one here in a tie ball game in the fourth quarter. And Brandon, when games are this close, it usually comes down to the team making the fewest mistakes, and that was one of our mantras back at Tennessee. Coach Major say all the time, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. You've got to cut those down to give yourself an opportunity. I would think as a play caller, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. They'd love to get a little closer if they need to kick the field goal on fourth down. From this spot, it's 46 yards. Throwing his hurts. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The kick by Elliott is good. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Charger drive about to get going. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, the goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Running on first down, Eckler. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What, is it three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Once more, here's Eckler. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. It was Josh Schwett who got him down on the defensive side. Now they've got to single that field goal unit, and they have to sprint out there in a hurry. And this is always difficult on the snapper because his heart rate is way up there, and he's got to calm himself enough to make an accurate snap. One last throw here for Herbert. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. Well, this fan base on the losing side, Charles, they're going to be talking about this one for a while. They ultimately decided to try to come up with a touchdown on that last play when all they needed was the field goal to force overtime. Yeah, and the reasoning behind it, that's what we're all waiting to hear because sometimes there's things that we don't see on the surface. Did the coach feel like, you know, if we tied the game, they couldn't go any farther, they had too many injuries? I'm not sure what was going on there, but I'm with you. I'm stunned they didn't try and kick the field goal there. 